All right, everybody, Pete Giles Garage here, and on today's episode, we're gonna learn how to replace your uh, pretty much your coil harness, uh, your coil pack harness, and upgrade it to the ECS tuning uh, coil harness. Um, we got the beautiful Rob right here, <laughs> and we're gonna be doing this today. So let's get to work. This is Pete Giles Garage. So pretty much your first step in this endeavor is to take off your vacuum reservoir if you have it and then uh, remove all your ignition coil um, packs there's just a the wiring there's a 10 millimeter bolt here a 10 here and then there's allen's right underneath that holds this whole entire place uh, part together and then once we get all that removed we're going to show you guys what to do next now the big reason why we're doing this is for two reasons the number one is misfires uh, the second one is that these have, it's old plastic, old plastic that gets brittle, cracks, and causes a premature shorts, which in turn causes your car to misfire and just not run correctly. So Rob right now is removing the, uh, the uh, hockey puck or the PCV hose that's on the top of the valve cover, since it's in the way of the harness. Um, again, a couple little screws and you're pretty much there and out of the way. Uh, show you guys right over here. There's, I guess, there's the vacuum reservoir, and then right here, here's the PCV. We just unbolted it from the hockey puck, which is on the turbo inlet pipe. That now exposes the wire in here. We unplugged everything that we needed to unplug, and now on this part, what we want to do very, very carefully. You're going to unravel all of this right here towards the back and you're going to cut the black tape off. Do not cut the wiring. We're going to label all our wires before we do any of the work. And then once we have it all labeled, then we're going to go and uh, start cutting and then uh, installing the new harness. So this is the brand new harness right here from ECS Tuning. And as you can see, it's a huge upgrade from the factory harness where everything's actually shrink wrapped uh, heat shrink and upgraded rubber so less chances for this to get brittle and break so gorgeous gorgeous setup uh, we're gonna have to wire it in with these new pins so all this here is what we're gonna redo show you guys how to do because uh, we're gonna have to learn how to pin uh, an entire harness and only set you back 90 bucks <laughs> 90 yeah. oh uh, okay 100 bucks for this kit pretty much you can see right here uh, it gives you all the pins, little grommets, and everything to make the harness work correctly. So we're going to teach you guys how to wire this entire harness up. So now we're going to show you guys this view because this is probably going to be the best view you guys can see from what we're going to be showing you. So as per ECS Tuning's manual or instruction manual, uh, um, they want you to cut right here next to the valve cover. They also have it up over this. Yeah, so... Um, you'll see that right here. This is where they want you to cut your wiring right here. Um, no, we're not going to do that. I'm sorry, ECS tuning. That's not a great spot to cut it. We need a little bit more girth, um, for, especially for those guys that, you know, are new to cutting and crimping. Uh, this is just a smarter option to keep it, unravel all the tape. And you'll see here where this pigtail starts to actually daisy chain off back into the loop. You're going to cut there. That's where we're going to cut our harness because <clears throat> cutting here it gives you guys a lot of slack here to strip yeah, and crimp. Do that. ECS Tuning wants you to do it back here, and I'm I'm sorry, but that's not a smart spot to put it at. We're going to be again. We're going to be cutting right at the end of the last um, ignition coil right at the end right here and the reason why we go there because we can count all the wiring that we need it's all here and it's all labeled correctly so this is a smart spot to cut at 
All right, guys, so um, this is how it's gonna be wired. So you guys can see this. Uh, make sure we, on your connector, the, the actual connector that we're gonna be pinning, you'll see there's a little, that's the top of the connector. So that's what's gonna matter the most. And so cylinder one, two, three, and four in that order. Um, I'm sorry, and backwards, I'm sorry. Four, three, two, one. Um, and the way that you know on AWP engine, uh, just again, use your harness as your, uh, use your factory harness as your uh, guide. That way it's less confusing. On the first cylinder right here, the lead wire, the tiny, tiny lead wire right here, it's purple with the black wire. So that's cylinder one. If we go all the way down here to cylinder four, it's black with a purple wire. So that's how we know uh, from one to four. Uh, on this connector, it goes backwards. It goes four, three, two, one. And just remember in that specific order. So four, three, two, one. And you're gonna make your wiring go across with that. Now, the next one right here, all the grounds. So one, two, three, four. Those guys right there, I mean, these are all the positives. Uh, these don't matter what order they go in. Just put them all in. One, two, three, four. Whatever order you want to do, whatever comfort you have, it doesn't matter. This is These are just constant. So just, again, any order that you want to put them in, it doesn't matter. Um, so just remember that. And the next two are here. These two right here. Um... The next two is the brown and uh, beige, like pinkish color. Um, you have your ignition and then your VSS ground. This is actually what tells the the signal to actually kick on and off on your ignition coil. So um, on some engines, they will, they will be a different color. Uh, just keep track of everything. Um, but this is for an AWP, so that's what we're doing it for. Uh, again, the solid brown one and then the beige one in that order. This is the top of the connector. So the nice brown and then beige. And if we look at the actual harness right here, you're gonna have on this one, uh, is the brown one right here. You'll see this guy. This is the, um, the ground or uh, ignition ground with no tracer. It's just a solid color. And then you have this weird beige one with a yellow stripe. Some of them will have a stripe, some of them won't. Um, just so you guys know, this is the one that you guys are gonna have to put um, over here on this connector on the second port. Okay, so the solid one, the solid brown is the ground constant. That is always gonna be on, on here. And if we look on our uh, ignition harness, it's gonna be pretty much right next to the positive, the black and pink one. So that guy is the ground right next to it. And then again, the one with the yellow wire or the, the brown with the yellow tracer, that is gonna be your number six connector on your pigtail, okay? So our moment of truth here, we're gonna cut again right here, okay? So now the harness is cut. It's official. No turning back. <laughs> no turning back. <laughs> And we're going to freak you out a little bit because you guys are going to panic a little bit, but it's fine. What you want to do is strip all of your wiring, okay? Strip them all. And then separate everything accordingly. So you'll see right here, half of the harness is already accounted for right there. See these black and... Um, oh, here it is. Yeah. Get you guys a little bit closer on the action here, hold on. There you go, oh yeah, that's so much better. So see these four right here that Rob's holding? They're black with uh, kind of like a purple stripe. These four don't matter um, what order they go in on the pigtail. Your top row. Okay, the top row of the pigtail. Now these four right here are your cylinders. Okay. Very important. And then this is like we were talking about, there's that brown one, which is ground, and this weird uh, peachy, yellowish brown, whatever it is, one. Um, 
That one is going to be your uh, uh, your other signal wire, which we're, I'll show you guys in a little bit. So, first one we're going to do, we're going to pin the four cylinders right here. Okay. Now, if you're freaking out about your wiring, don't worry, man. You have your original pigtail right here. So what you can do is with that original wire, just use it as a reference. And since we cut right here, we already have all our wiring right here as a reference. So we know which one is four, three, two, and one in that order. Okay. So if you want to do that and break it down, I mean, that's how you'll know what cylinder is what on your pigtail. So here's your pin that we're going to use our reference for cutting or stripping our wire. So if we're going to grab and this is cylinder, let's see, this is black and yellow. So this is cylinder number two. And then we're gonna go all the way to here, and that's how much we're gonna strip. We don't wanna strip too much wiring. And you guys can see where my finger is. So that's how much is coming off of that little loom. So you guys can see as a reference. Don't cut too much, don't go too far back. It's okay if you don't cut enough, but if you cut too much, you got wire exposed. So we use these for strippers. You guys can see these are really cool. Uh, I picked these up at AutoZone for like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, they have a, uh, an adjustment here to put how much tension you want on the wire. That way it's just, these are self strippers. They just boop, boop and strip. Really, really simple. Um, again, look about how much we need. We're there. And then you can see where it's at. Perfect. It's right there, it's nice. So now, the way that you crimp these, these suck. I'm just telling you guys now, because they're so tiny, and you can damage them pretty quick. Um, you gotta bend them one flap down at a time, and then once you have them bent down, like I said, one flap at a time, then you squeeze them. Uh, with the wiring and then we're gonna add some solder just to prevent it from backing out on us So you guys could see what we ended up doing here We kind of made like a we bent them into like a little tunnel shape and we need to do that before you even uh, Put this on the wiring so pre bend all of these in a nice little round hoop So you can have them ready to go uh, right now We're gonna add the grommets as well to that because you need to add your uh, your wiring grommets down here below, but just so you guys can see that, that's how it's supposed to be before you even uh, install these, okay? So right here, we're gonna solder just, like I said, a, just a dab of uh, solder right in the middle, right here. Can you hold the tip of this, like hold, hold that, but yeah, but don't yank on it hard. Is this okay? Yeah. I just don't want it to, because it, if it moves, it won't solder in place. Not hot enough. Come on. There we go. Alright, turn that turn that off. Before <laughs> we melt something. There. So just a dab of solder, we'll hold it in place, leave it alone. One down nine to go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, and repeat the process. And once you have all of your pigtails done, then we'll actually connect them to the actual connector. Um, don't get the the connector in the way do that last first do all your saw all your crimping and your soldering and then bring the connector to plug everything in uh, in the manual from ECS tuning they're gonna have you do that first but that block gets in the way so you don't want that this is easy just push one out of the way and start working with the next one repeat your process until you're done we'll show you guys what to do next after we get this all taken care all right. of so now that we pretty much soldered everything and crimped everything that we needed. The next step is to pin our pretty much uh, adapter here. Now, this is the top. 
This is the bottom that's flush. So on the top, the first four that go up here are gonna be the um, the random, the black and purple. So black line, uh, black solid black with the purple stripe. There's no order for these to go in. They just go in. You just push it on and push the grommet in. Which helps because they're all red grommets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like that. Now try to keep the wiring kind of organized. So now we have the four ones right here. Again, these four all just uh, plug into the top. They're random. They don't need to be in any specific order. Okay, so those those are done. See how simple that was? Okay, so now the next two, you have these two right here. One and two, uh, these two right here, and then these are plugged. So you guys can see that. Um, see if I get a needle nose. Here we go. So this one and this one you have to use. And these two right here are plugged. And then these four are for your cylinders. And it goes four, three, two, one. Not one, two, three, four. So four, three, two, one. You gotta plug those two first. So we're down to the uh, cylinders here. Uh, so if we're looking at the harness upside down, Making sure the, 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 the top is actually facing straight down. Uh, right here is number 12, 11, uh, 10, and 9. So cylinder number 1, right, for 12? Yeah. Cylinder 1, 2, 3, and 4 in that order. Uh, so it's black with purple line, black with yellow line, and then now black with uh, peach line. Because you get this upside down right now, right? Yeah. This is upside down like this. Is it wrong? Hello, everybody. So, we're done. Um, one that's going to be the hardest out of all of these is the main ground wire, which is the brown one. You guys can see that. This guy right here. Um, so the four black and purples are the top. They don't go in any specific order. If we go down here, you have the brown and flat peachy color one. So brown is first and then the peachy color is second. And then if we go right over to the other, on the back side, we have cylinder one, two, three, and four. Actually, hold on, let me correct myself. Um, not one, two, three, and four, it's... One, two, three, and four, like that. Uh, so four, three, two, one, and then one, two, three, four. That's how you know the order that they're in. I'm sorry, I can't get you guys any closer just because of the way that I uh, this wire harness is so short. But that's how you wire it up. We're gonna plug it in and see if the car fires up and not explode. <laughs> if it fires up, then we did it right. If we fire, if it doesn't fire up, then we got the wire somewhere wrong. We'll figure that out, but I don't think we have. I think we got it all right. Uh, my recommendation is get yourself a little bit of electrical tape and uh, electro electrical tape this part of the loom just a little bit, not too much, uh, so you guys don't have any issues. We'll get you guys part numbers in a little bit. No, don't push that in yet. Again, we're only doing it just for for people can for you to see and people can see. <laughs> and we're gonna do a quick test run. And then we'll fix uh, the length and everything once we're done. It's important really quick. I know, right? It's like, oh yeah, you have a uh, pigtails that collect now. <laughs> there we go. 
you need that ground the ground bolt right here. Now we're not done yet. We're gonna show you guys how to tuck this in correctly and whatnot, but we're just trying to get this to run really quick. And then move these wires back like this, just to, for safety. And we cut the battery back. So he's gonna, we don't need to hook this now. up, do we? As long as you unplug the sensor, it should be fine. Right. So now the harness is uh, plugged in and going. Now Rob's gonna fire it up, make sure it's out of gear. Things in idle. Let's see if this fires up. Oh well, vacuum leak right here. You good? Go, got it. There you go. You guys can hear that. It's not misfiring. It's not having a weird idle. If I pull the vacuum, I always have the idle funky, but yeah, we that wired it up correctly. <laughs> so now that we got it all going, turn off the car. Don't need to listen to it while I try to talk over. <laughs> okay, so the only issue that I see right off the bat with this uh, harness is just the way that these wires sit and you'll notice it sits wants to sit on the intercooler pipe i mean um the turbo uh charge pipe so what you're going to probably have to figure out how to do maybe make a little loom like little hooks right here to make sure it sits down and out of the way because right now off the bat i'm not liking that the harness sits really aggressively tight um so we'll fix that in a little bit but we wanted to show you guys that everything's done and then we'll get you guys part numbers in just a minute. So what we end up doing, guys, is I know it's going to be super hard to show you, but down over here underneath, when you remove your intake, uh, there's a little clip that holds uh, the, the ignition harness on this side or the coil pack harness. Um, on this side, unclip it and then just slide your wiring just a little down, you know? See, you can see where I can move it up and down, just like that. So now I'm going to clip it back in. Because this thing is really hard. That's, a, that's stiff wiring. And then we're gonna push. Careful, careful, don't push too hard. Kinda like that, yeah, just leave it like that. Yeah, because uh, if I push it anymore, we're already tugging, we're sit, it's sitting on the intake manifold. I'm in the intake. Hey, babe. Hey. Thank you. Just like that. Um, <laughs> It kind of sucks. I don't like the way this one sits. Um, but, I mean, it's it's on there. It's out of the way. It's not sitting on anything rough besides this right here. Uh, since it's rubber, it should be okay. Um, but you guys can see it right there. It sits right here and it's hitting right here on the turbo inlet pipe. It might dig a hole into it. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, since ECS made this right here really, really hard, they should have designed this with a 90 degree going down, and then I would solve the problem. But they didn't, and you can't really bend this down. This is like super thick right here. And I'm worried if I bend it down that we'll lose a connection on the inside of this, so that's the best we can do, you know? But it looks good. I mean, it looks definitely like, a, for sure, an upgrade from stock. Yeah, <laughs> that's the stock harness in comparison. Uh, see if you guys get you guys a closer look to that. But there you go. So before and after, and then now it's a quick disconnect and connect. So not bad. I like it. Um, again, I'm not, not a big fan right here of the and how it touches the terminal in that pipe. But that's what I mean. That's what it is. Uh, right here here's the part number from ECS tuning uh, for, as a kit hopefully you guys can read that 
If not, uh, 321-9403 is the harness kit. Um, again, just take your time. There's not a lot, it's not a lot of work, it's just very tedious work. Remember to cut the wire harness over here, not all the way over here, because you're not gonna have any space. I'm telling you that right off the bat. And then just take your inlet, uh, your, your intake pipe off right here, and then unclip it from down here at the bottom, and then clip it back in once you have it where you want it. And that's it. And then it'll work. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of Peach House Garage with the bearded lady Rob and me um, doing the job here. Uh, and it's not that hard. At a skill level of, I guess, um, ECS's one through four wrenches, I, at Al's Peach House Garage skill level, I'd say anyone can do this. Just with basic hand tools and wire crimping it's tools. Really and yeah, the guy that they provide does work really, really well. Um, just take your time properly. Take your time stripping your wires, crimping them, using solder as a holder uh, to hold the wiring in place. Uh, if you don't solder them, it's going to cause just premature failures. Uh, we've been, we soldered them right here, so right in the middle. The two grommets here, I'm not two grommets, the two uh, crimping points in between we soldered them. Um, it's just as a holder, holder to keep them in place nicely. But that's it. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Peace out. Much love. And thanks for watching. Be Charles Garage.